I want to make sure that the school's philosophy and its purpose matches with my philosophy on education and how I'd like to see education be. Welcome to another video on my channel, bringing you people working in China of the 21st century. And today I'm here uh, bringing you another talk with an educator, continuing my fascination with international education. I'm here with Kelly Kramer, uh, the director at this school, an international school of Dongguan, yeah. ISD, school by ISS, right? Yes. We are an ISS managed school, that's correct. And we are going to talk about uh, raising and teaching third culture kids, teaching jobs in China, whether it's worth coming here and who is it suitable for. So Kelly, thank you for hosting me. No, we're happy to have you. We've had you many times out at the baseball field, so yes. it's good to have you in the building. Yes, like I said, my son was here for the first baseball practice That's last That's awesome. Week. Yeah, you're going to have a kid that is he hooked got on first baseball. glove, yeah. and we played yeah. catch yesterday. Let and me tell yeah, you. It's, it's great. Yeah. I will be coming back here every Saturday for Wonderful. sure. Wonderful. So you have been an educator for 35 years. Yeah, it's a long time. <laughs> it's a long time. A long Where are you time. from originally? Uh, originally from Janesville, Wisconsin in the okay. United States. And how did you start teaching? Oh Lord, so I always wanted to be a teacher. That was a given when I was growing up. You set up your dolls and whatever, and I was always the teacher, so I knew I was gonna be a teacher, but um, I was also a foreign exchange student in high school, and so I always knew I wanted to go back overseas and teach in an international or just somewhere else. So when you started teaching, not only you knew you wanted to be a teacher, you knew you wanted to be an international Correct. teacher. I always wanted to right. be able to move and go around the world. Yep. That is, uh, that is uh, interesting. And, and you did it, right? And I did, You did yeah. it in like six countries, I think. Uh, yes. Where did you go first? Which countries did you go through? So we started off um, 35 years ago because I had a little four pound baby with me. Okay. Um, we went to Ecuador. Okay. And so, and Spanish is my second language, so it's helpful mm -hmm. um, with being able to live and survive way back in the 80s. Yeah, it's almost like, yeah, it's less challenging than going to a country that uh, you, you can... Most definitely. Yeah. Okay. So, so how long have you been in, in Ecuador? So we were in Ecuador for four years and then went back to the States, had the second baby, stayed for a year and then went back out and went to Pakistan. Pakistan. Yeah. Okay. Great. It's such a beautiful country. In the and 90s. It's, yeah. And, and it's so beautiful and the people truly are the kindest people on the planet. And you stayed so there for a few four years? Four years as years. well. Yeah. Okay. Why did you leave? Why did you leave every place? It's just feeling like... It, it was it, time to go. You kind of get to a, a point and when you're in international education, a lot of it is, is because you do want to see other places in the world and that you become part of a community and then it is, okay, I've become part of that community. I've kind of made my mark and, and left hopefully something of a legacy and okay, it's time to go and experience something else. And from there, you moved to Bangkok? So then from Pakistan, we went to Bangkok. Bangkok, but there you stayed for a long time. We stayed for a long time and that was more so my husband because my husband's um, an athletic director. He's now retired, Okay. but, um, and it's a large school. So it's like a, a, a university setting. So with all the fields and the pools and the tennis courts and the baseball fields. And you were comfortable. So, yeah, we, we're an athletic family. And you so. stayed there for a while? Uh, yeah, let our kids graduate from high school there. And then? And then, so my two kids graduated, went back to the States, and we became empty nesters. And for me, it was time for another change once they left. And so then I decided to pursue my doctorate. So I went back to the United States and my husband stayed in Bangkok. And so I went back and um, took a job actually for the one of the two times that I ever had a public school job. I took it back in the US. In the US as a, an administrator in a public school system. And, and after that was here? No, oh no. Oh no, there's, okay. there's more. Yeah, there's more. So then from there, I went to Hangzhou in okay. China. So China. So China, okay. but then left China, went back, um, 
finished my coursework for my doctorate, went to Venezuela. Okay. And spent five years then in Venezuela, and then came and to And then the, came to Dongguan, Dongguan China. Dongguan, right. correct. Wow, that's a uh, very interesting, people would say, very interesting life to live, right? Yeah, it is. It's, it's a wonderful lifestyle. Let's uh, take a walk, you see bet. the school. All right. You let's... bet. This school has been here for 10 years now, right? It has. We're right. celebrating our 10th anniversary, which is awesome. Thank you. Right. Let's take a left here, right? We'll take a left. We'll yes. go towards our art we'll gallery. Yes. Indeed. So, um, you uh, you came here uh, four years ago? Uh, yeah, this is the start of my fourth year right. at ISD. Now, all this uh, story you told me, this is your art gallery, this right? This is our art uh, gallery. We can just take a peek, but we, yeah. we won't go in. Let's, okay, let's we'll just here. keep walking along. It's a bit dark there. It is. Um, one question I didn't ask you before, but mm. just because of what you just said. Um, do you remember some of those students 30 years ago? You know, here's an interesting one. So I was teaching in, let's see, it was in Hangzhou. I actually wasn't teaching, I was the head of school. Okay. And we had a, a young couple come in and the they were from Japan and the young lady looked at me and she goes, Mrs. Kramer? And I said, yes. And she goes, I'm Yuki. I'm like, oh my goodness, Yuki. I taught third grade. And she was one of my former third graders. And how old was graders. she oh, when she met you? Oh, 20 something. Oh, okay. So she so, remembered you. Obviously, oh, it's yes. easier because... Yeah. yeah. So, it, you know, and then I still stay in touch with some of my, my former students. I have, uh, every year that I go to New York, I get in touch with one of my students. Um, who's now a physician. She's a pediatrician in New York City. So okay. we go and have lunch. We're gonna go through down there? Um, uh, why where? don't we turn around? Turn around. Because, and we'll go down this hallway over here, which oh, will okay. lead us over to ah, our physical hallway. education. Okay, okay. Yeah. No problem. So this is our second and third grade wing. So our kids third are in there. They are, they're amazing oh, kids. They but in no, they <laughs> don't, unless they get very, very excited. Right. But no, this is just so our work. Walk from way all over. of these countries, yeah, quite a few places you've been to and you walked at. Um, yeah, which one was your favorite? Oh, that's a tough that's one. That's a really hard one. If you have to choose, if I have to choose, you I know, mean, Bangkok, you've been a really long time. Bangkok so. was because of my family, right? Because when I think about where did our family grow up, and if you ask my kids where they're from, they tell you Thailand. But probably my favorite country is Venezuela. Now, people don't associate Venezuela Especially in current US. times with the U.S. Yeah. situation. The people there are amazing. They love life. And even in hardship, they keep the most positive outlook and they are the most resilient people on the planet. So the thing you see when you live in other places, you figure out it's not what you've been taught. Exactly. It's not what the media told you. This is uh, something. This is there. our yeah. This is our multi-purpose room. So I don't know if it's anybody's. It's not like the in. black box theater. No, room. our it's black upstairs. box theater is ah, upstairs. upstairs. Okay. So we can All right. Go up there. So let's, so let's go, down go down here. Um, go downstairs. So yeah. So you you open your mind that and you you, you saw it for yourself. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So the it same was. About Venezuela and you yeah. Loved it. I loved Venezuela. Okay. So even though it was um, a little harrowing at times. Mm -hmm. Um, I always knew that our, our colleagues and our friends were always there for us, so we were very, very fortunate. So this is our sort of our this athletic, gym there. our athletic. We can just facility. take a peek, not yeah. Go so if we can go, yeah, we could walk in and through and around. I know, maybe it will be an echo there. I'm not oh, sure. Maybe. maybe we better not go in. But okay. this is where the, the doing yeah. class right now. Yeah. Okay, we can we can walk from here. Okay. And walk there. Okay. So. so um, so you've been raising your kids abroad too. As, I have. As you and your husbands are international educators, yes. right? Yes, yeah. And uh, mostly in Bangkok, right? Correct. Mostly. And uh, now you are running a school that, uh, uh, well, you know, have parents, like what you have done all so many years. What would be your, your advice to parents who are raising third culture kids? So, especially in China? Uh, especially in China, and I think if you're transient, if you're moving a lot, is pay attention to when your kids, when you're moving, right. when you're transferring, because those transitions really are hard on kids. We don't notice it quite so much because we think kids are resilient, which they are. 
amazingly resilient, but they still have their little feelings and emotions, which can make that transition harder on them. So pay attention to the little things. Are they sleeping? Are they eating properly? Are their emotions going up and down? So but psychologically, yeah, it's, uh, it's really to, okay. to pay attention to that. All right. Mm. Um, okay, now let's talk about uh, uh, teachers in China uh -huh. and coming to be an international teacher. Yes. Now it's COVID time, right? So right. it's been really difficult for you to find proper teachers, to relocate teachers, what yeah. you usually would do. Finding the teachers is not such a big deal. We can typically find them. It is harder to bring them into China. So within China, we have been very fortunate to be able to find great walk talent. Out. Walk out back outside. Yeah. Sure, yeah. you bet. Right it's great. And uh, so, yeah. So how do, you, how do you go? So how do we go about doing it? Is we have our connection through ISS, mm -hmm. and we have um, six different schools within China. And then we will go ahead and post our listings and we'll look for talent that way. All right, so now mm. if someone is watching this uh, from uh, Western countries, from their home, yes. and mm. they are teachers, yes. and they are thinking, I want to get a better teaching job, better teaching career, yes. they want to become international educators. As you can see on my channel, there's many videos with international yes. education. There's Maybe you get a taste. Yes. What would you advise to them? How do they can go about? How do they doing go it? about doing it? Is first, there's lots of different um, companies that can help them with okay. that. So ISS is just one of them, mm -hmm. but there are different companies that can do it. But first and foremost, do your homework. Where do you really want to go? What do you want to see? What kind of school do you want to be in? Because there's lots. Just like there's different people, there's different schools, different philosophies. So do your homework on where you want to go. Do your homework on where you want to go? Yep. Okay, and then uh, before when we talked before the interview, you you said something that I've never thought about. Mm. You said school is the school is better than the city or the location. Exactly. So yeah, so one of the questions that I often get is why do you want to be in this city? And for me, it's always about the school and the culture of the school because that's our life. Our life is to be here to work with the kids in the school and with our colleagues. So I want to make sure that the school's philosophy and its purpose matches with my philosophy on education and how I'd like to see education be at that school. And, and who is it suitable for? To be a teacher in China? To, you know, for educators in general, it's for anybody who's adventurous, anybody who is flexible, and anybody who can tolerate maybe a little bit of frustration from time to time. But, you know, it, because it is very different than being at home, where you can walk into the grocery store, you can walk in anywhere and ask a question, a medical facility, and know that you're going right. to understand. Right. Right. Whereas when you're somewhere else, and it doesn't matter China or Pakistan, anywhere else, it's different and the systems are different. And if, uh, if someone is coming to China mm. now, you've been here for years now. Yep. As a teacher, as, a, as, a, as, as an, an educator. Yes. As an, and what, what advice would you give them? Coming to China? Coming to China, being in China, beginning in China. Like for example, if I could give myself an advice for 18 mm. years ago, I would say sit and study Chinese. Uh -huh. Yes, <laughs> me too. <laughs> but you know, um, I have found even in Dongguan, there are a lot more people that speak English and because of technology, it has made it a little bit easier. Right. I think yeah. what it would be Chips. is, um, you know, for me, food is important and being with Chinese, mindset because I think that sometimes the way that um, you mean understand the culture uh, yeah okay so I try really to understand, understand the, culture the culture rather than fight with it or correct right learn yeah. the history or something like yeah. that right I think that's very important yes. because if you know the history of, of the of place, the place yeah. where you're going you know where they've come right. from. This is your baseball field. Yeah. This is our baseball field about, and right. we've got some amazing right. baseball players. Right okay. Our youngest baseball player this year is three years old. And seriously, he is a baseball player. 
three years old, huh? Three is years old. Pardon? Is it Bronson? No, no it's not. not. It's Ronald. So you mean he's in Chilling? He is in the Chilling, Chilling Academy. Oh, wow. okay. And he was just at the last um, championship, which our team won. And so, yeah, so he's part of the team. And our boys look out for him just as if he's a little brother. That It's another reason why I love ISD is. This, Our kids look at each other. Is this the ISD uh, slogan? Maybe it is. It is. Inspire, succeed, succeed dream. and dream. So we really want to inspire our kids to, to find their passions and then to go out and succeed at whatever dream they have set for themselves. So I think it's very, very important that our kids, all kids, have this ability to do that. Do you think you're going to stay in China for much longer? I will, I will stay in China for a little bit, but yeah. my, my husband is back in the United States and right. I haven't seen him for a couple of years. It's a COVID, COVID situation. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's been it's, really tough. Right. right. But. Okay. Well, uh, it was really uh, interesting talking to you. Yeah, you too. Thanks for Thanks. the insights. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I just, like I said, I'm kind of fascinated with international educa education. Um, living here, also knowing all of you in different schools and, and also my kids being the third culture kids. like Exactly. What you're, she yes. told me a lot more just before <laughs> when we sat down before the video I, and, uh, and it's really, really interesting uh, seeing, uh, learning from perspective of someone that already passed that. Yeah, I've been through that. most of it. So I'm Correct. trying to learn. Yeah, and now I have grandchildren that right. are third culture third kids. Culture. And they're here with you, And they're here. You. I am lucky. Right. I am okay. very fortunate. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like so we can reach more people. And since I see on my channel that a lot of you are not subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel as well. And I'm Ziv, and I was here with Kelly and ISD. Until I see you next time, have a good day.